Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my initial first looks review of the Canon RFS 10 to 18 mm f 4.5 to 6.3 IS STM, a compact ultra wide angle zoom designed for EOS R mirrorless cameras with cropped APS C sensors. Note this lens is not compatible with EOS M cameras, but owners of that system have the older EFM 11 to 22 as an ultra wide option. I got my hands on a pre-production RFS 10 to 18 for this video, and I'll show you what I know so far. Announced in November 2023, the 10 to 18 becomes the fourth RFS lens and the widest in that particular series to date, delivering coverage equivalent to 16 to 29 mm when mounted on APS-C bodies like the R100, R50, R10, and R7, or indeed on a full-frame EOS R body when it's in a crop mode. This makes it perfect for capturing expansive landscapes, large buildings, cramped interiors, big group shots, or of course filming pieces to camera and vlogging. It costs around £380 at launch, but do check the description for the latest or US pricing. In the absence of third-party options, it's the only native, ultra-wide zoom lens designed for EOS R cameras with crop sensors, at least at the time I made this review. But if you're willing to adapt an older lens, there's also the EFS 10-18 f4.5 to 5.6 is stm to consider admittedly a bit larger and heavier but one third of a stop brighter at the long end and cheaper too at around 250 dollars or pounds there's also the even older and larger efs 10 to 22 mil with its longer reach and brighter f3.5 to 4.5 aperture to weigh up and bargains to be had on it second hand again if you're willing to adapt Alternatively, if you're thinking of going full frame, or already have a mix of bodies, the RF 10-20mm f4L, launched just one month earlier, also delivers a similar range, but its full frame compatibility and L quality means a high price of around $2300 or pounds, plus it's pretty hefty for use on an APS-C body, so we'll probably rule that one out. Before moving on though, I feel it would be remiss not to also mention Sigma's recently announced 10-18mm f2.8 DCDN, designed for APS-C mirrorless cameras and boasting a brighter and constant f2.8 aperture for around $600 or pounds. Right now though, it's only available for Sony E, Leica L and Fujifilm X mount, but I really sincerely hope that they can work something out with Canon and Nikon in the near future. It's a really nice option. But for now, the RFS 10-18 is the only native ultra-wide zoom option that's designed for Canon EOS R bodies with APS-C sensors, so let's just get on with it. First things first, this is a very compact and lightweight lens, thanks partly to the fairly modest aperture and also the use of some plastic moulded elements. It measures 69mm in diameter, 45mm long in its retracted state, and weighs just 150 grams. You'll barely notice it when mounted on a camera, and that makes it particularly well suited for the smaller bodies in the system, like the R50 and R100. Compare that to the EFS 10-18mm at 75 by 72 mm and 240 grams, and that's without the EF to EOS R adapter that's required for mirrorless bodies. Canon also reckons that the new lens is sharper in the corners than this model, but I will of course be testing that claim when I get a final production model. The tiny lens barrel means there's not room for many controls. The narrow zoom ring is twisted first to extend the lens for use, before then adjusting the focal length. Then for the minimum transportation size, just twist it back again. Towards the end of the barrel is a combined manual focusing and customizable RF control ring before you reach the 49mm filter thread. As a budget lens, there's no lens hood supplied and no official weather sealing. The lens employs STM focusing and has optical image stabilisation, claiming a fairly average 4 stops on bodies without IBIS, or 6 on those that do. And with its ultra-wide coverage, there's plenty of latitude to accommodate the extra crop of digital movie stabilisation, to further eye now any wobbles when vlogging handheld. You're looking at it here on an EOS R100 body, with the lens set to 10mm f4.5, first with all stabilisation disabled. This clip illustrates the broad coverage available, albeit also the minimal opportunity for shallow depth of field effects when you set to 10mm 4.5. Next here's the combination with optical image stabilisation enabled on the lens. Remember that the R100 body I'm using here doesn't have sensor shift IBIS, so this is optical stabilisation alone. Also note the 10 to 18 does not feature the peripheral IS correction of the RF 10 to 20, so beware of potential warping in the edges when you are using bodies with IBIS. 
Now here's the R100 with the movie IS set to standard, applying a little digital compensation here to further reduce the wobbles. And finally, with Movie IS set to Enhanced, where the camera applies a greater crop to deliver potentially greater stabilisation, at least in some situations. Now, your mileage will of course vary. I'd say here it's getting a little bit too tight when facing the camera at arm's length, but it would be fine when you're filming behind the camera. As for the coverage, here's how it looks in practice, taking you from standard wide to ultra wide coverage for really dramatic results. The aperture dims to f5 at 11mm, then to f5.6 at 13mm, then to f6.3 at 15 to 18mm. Once I get my hands on the final production lens, I'll add sample images to my review page at camelabs.com before following up with a full video testing and comparing the quality and overall performance. Right now though, the RFS 10 to 18 is a very welcome, indeed necessary addition to the catalogue of native lenses designed for ESR bodies with crop sensors. Until now, there was no practical option for achieving true ultra-wide coverage on these bodies without adapting all DFS lenses. Now, finally, there's a compelling native option. It's also interesting to note that so far the RFS releases are looking eerily similar in range and specification to the previous EFM catalogue, which would mean the zooms are now pretty much covered and we may finally see some small prime lenses next. I really hope so as again in the absence of third party options, having to rely on adapted DSLR lenses or unnecessarily large and expensive RF full frame lenses is far from ideal. Canon really needs to give APS-C more lens love, or at least allow Sigma and Tamron to release for it. So is this a lens that you're going to buy for your cropped frame EOS R camera? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.